Hello, I heiße Kevin. Is that right? Yeah, I know that's called German. Good job. Recently, my friends from Red Bull invited me to Salzburg, Austria for the kickoff of the world's toughest adventure race, the X Alps. My objectives, discover how elite athletes fuel and power their bodies and prepare their minds to tackle challenges on land and in the air. And yes, of course, I sample local cuisines and discover a brand new culture. Here's part one of my adventure. Yep, we're officially here. So we went from torrential rain to now sunny, beautiful Austria. I forget that like Austrians, they're really all about efficient living and stuff. So I'm like, where's the closet? Here's the bed. It's dope how everything is so compact. And then you put your clothes back here. Look at this, y'all. You see that? That's where we're going. This beautiful castle, like in Game of Thrones. I think we're getting close because here we can take a trolley or we can walk the rest of the way. I'm gonna see how long the walk is. Let's go. Check out this view. Salzburg is postcard beautiful. It's a picturesque European city surrounded by rolling hills and mountains that are kissed by clouds. Even with the slight overcast and sporadic rain showers, it's easily one of the most beautiful cities I've ever seen. We've got our rain gear on now. Yeah. Starving like Marvin. So we're trying to find something to eat. Y'all know I love a food truck. Seriously, I love food trucks. Oh, I like that one. A giant hot dog wrapped in bacon with cheese on it. In it. <laughs> in it. Oh, there's a cheese, yeah. cheese inside the hot cheese dog? In the hot dog. Yeah, everywhere. What do you mean everywhere? This is a, this part's not wrapped in bacon, bro. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm only trying this because he said it was Austrian, so it's a like a, it's a cultural thing. Oh wow! Look at that. <laughs> the cheese. I just had to stop that because it busted my leg. <laughs> Mm. 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 It's so good. It's day two here in Salzburg. Uh, just ate breakfast and now we are headed out to base camp. I'm out here with my friends from Red Bull for the most incredible race I've ever heard of. It's called the X Alps. Would you hike, paraglide, climb, survive two weeks? over 1,100 kilometers. These athletes have been training for over one year just for this moment to make X Alps history. For most people who train pretty hard, it's around maybe 3,000 calories, the average person. These athletes are eating up to 7,000, 8,000 calories per day. It's the most elite athletes in the entire world, and we're gonna go and talk to them right now. Fuchsia was about a 45 minute drive, which allowed me to see more of the countryside. As you can see, no filter was needed. So I'm here with Richard. He is the social media manager for the X Alps Games, and he was just telling me about the crazy race. So it starts over here, right? Yeah, it and starts so right over here behind us. Uh -huh, uh -huh. They race along this path, and then they, they basically they disappear through a tunnel. And then they run to the top of the Zwilferhorn, which unfortunately you can't see from here. Yeah. But it's like a solid 10 kilometer run. This is actually a uh, the, the Leatherman Prologue, which is a introductory race. This is the warm up. This is the warm up. <laughs> I think being in Salzburg and now being here at this part, the temperature just dropped. It's, I'm guessing because we're surrounded by all these mountains, as you can see. It's picturesque, isn't it? The water. Come on. See how cold it is. Oh, actually, you know what? It's pretty warm. It's not that. It's not that cold. I thought it was gonna be like ice cold, like mountain water. It's actually pretty fresh. And here are the athletes representing the Stars and Stripes: Jesse Williams, Gavin McClurg, and rookie Mitch Riley. We're driving right now to the communications stop, but you can 
see some of the athletes right now hiking. Trying to get through and this cat literally just jumped in front of the road. Like the cat just got up there like he was upset. Ma'am, you know, it just happened. Listen, I'm out of breath just being in the car, just sitting here in the car. I'm out of breath right now, literally. I, can't, I can barely breathe. And it's a wild ride. Oh God, please Jesus. <laughs> Check out this view. Here I am at the highest checkpoint for the prologue race. I drove the athletes hiked, and they would paraglide down if the weather was better. Looking out over all this beauty, it made me wonder if the athletes, in the moments when they feel like giving up, they draw energy and inspiration from their surroundings. We just spent about 20 minutes driving up this mountain. And tell me why the athletes that were down there have already made it up here. You can't help but admire just the drive and the will of the human spirit. It's motivating to see how they're pushing their bodies to the next level. Going the same way the athletes go. I was watching them go down. They're kind of like squatting a little bit and going back on their heel. It's all quad. This is base camp, but these are all the RVs of the different athletes. And Basically, this is their home for the next two weeks inside of these cars. I'm here right now, guys, with Gavin. He looks super young. He's super fit. He's actually 45 years old. He just got finished with the prologue. So how was that today? It was kind of brutal because I, I, I'm pretty fast up and, yeah. and fine on the flat. So I was fine uh, getting up to the turn point, but they, they canceled the flying on the way up. So it means we couldn't fly down. We had to walk back down. And mm -hmm. for me, it's very much a walk and a walk slow because I don't have much cartilage in my knees. So I have to take it pretty <laughs> slow going down. I do a lot of mobility stuff, so a lot of rolling out, a lot of stretching, a lot of balls and bands, and um, and diet's a huge thing for me. What'd you eat this morning? I go on a pretty heavy fat and protein diet during mm -hmm. these, and, and I'm, I'm pretty, my body's pretty fat adapted now after all the months of training, so that's right. kind of what we shoot for. I mean, we still need carbs and, and sugar and fuel for, like, to keep from bonking and, you know, when you really need it, but uh, this morning I had a ton of avocado, uh, four eggs, quite a bit of bacon, uh, <laughs> a little bit of bread, and uh, and then a lot of coffee. Did you carve up after today's prologue? Uh, I did a bit actually. I did a big big thing of pasta, sausage. Uh, Today, right after We're in race. Austria, so the sausage is good here. <laughs> it really depends on where we are in the race and, and what we're about to do. Yeah. You know, I don't want to do too much of a gut on, but you know, nighttime is when it's really important before the next day to get in a ton of calories. Yeah. What do you tell yourself in those moments where your where your body is saying, "Okay, no more"? What do you tell yourself in your mind to get to get yourself past that? The key to this race is. Um, just being good at suffering. Sometimes it's just pure pain and you just gotta park that somewhere else. Yeah. So, I mean, what we're doing paragliding, it, it can be terrifying and really scary and you can get in some really bad situations. And But if you let that fear, fear like take control, you're gonna get hurt. You know, you've gotta just be able to compartmentalize and put stuff off to the side and pain's the same way, you know. That's just attitude. I love what you said. You said being good at suffering and I think so many times we try to take like the shortcut. There's no think. shortcuts, man. There's only <laughs> one way to get there. <laughs> Thank you for talking to me. I really appreciate that. We're at the award ceremony now for the prologue. Smell it, but somebody cooking something over here. Hey, what's up? <laughs> what's going on, man? How you doing? Doing good. How are you? How are you, man? Yeah, very good. Good. Yeah. And I see. I heard that y'all have to live inside here. You want, yeah, yeah. Come on in I for sure. See. This is <laughs> Cribs Edition. Like Boom. This is this Tom's <laughs> apartment here. Tom, this is you. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is really peaceful. Um, yeah. Okay. And then if we go yeah. inside here. My bed right using the bathroom as kind of a storage, my glider and harness. Uh, yeah. Wow. 
Yeah, you get quite a bit of space in this little bit in, in a really it's tiny... Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, and plenty like of storage. Look at the fridge. Yeah, just take a look at that fridge. Hey, that's nice. Yeah, for sure. We got a nice big fridge. This is not just a race, just like getting your body ready to run a marathon. It's like strategy. You've got to know things yeah. about like meteorology. I mean... <laughs> Yeah. You know, there's How the, do you the, even there's think the, about that? The way exactly. There's the meteorology. There's flying the glider, which of course requires um, really good muscle coordination. It's making this equipment a part of your body, you know. Mm. And it's the same with the glider. You know, the more in tune with the glider you are, the more it just starts to feel like a part of you. Psychologically, being able to stay calm and deal with stresses and fear, you know, yeah. a big part of it's been like me learning to relax and have eight, nine, ten hour flying days in strong conditions and still have energy at the end of the day, not feel mm. not feel pooped, you know? I mean, the race is what, 1,300 kilometers? Yeah. How do you know where to go? You know, looking at Google Earth, looking at these um, different open source trail maps, mm -hmm. things like that. Really nice thing about a paraglider is we can land in a really small place. I feel like I'm back in like uh, high school or college. <laughs> right? my teacher on no, there. no, no, it's good because I'm, I'm sitting here like amazed, thinking like, "Wow, this is this is not what you know like people think it is. Yeah. This is it's, it's much more. The training goes well beyond the gym. It, it extends to the classroom sure. as well. When you are tired and your legs are burning, what do you tell yourself to keep going? You know, um, I've I've done some ultra marathons too, and it's kind of the same saying. It's relentless forward progress. Do you have time this morning to, to cook something with me? Yeah, absolutely. All right, we got some cabbage here. I forget what this one was. I think, no, this was the, we had, this is the wild boar ham. This was the deer. Yeah. So we're cutting up now some cabbage. We've got some brie here. Remember, we're trying to boost the fat. We're thinking this may be kind of lean just because of how red it is. You don't see too many fat marbleization right here. Plus it's wild game, but this one should be kind of fatty. This is a, a diet and a meal that's much more uh, higher in fat, high in protein. I know I don't eat a lot of sauerkraut. I think I've had oh, it maybe man. once in my life. Cause it's got a, is it like a vinegar type of? A little bit, but that's mild. Okay. It's not so, it's not so vinegary. Yeah, now why is this important? With the long term thing, it's just gonna make it less likely that I pick up some sort of little stomach bug, right? Oh, G giving okay. my digestive system good biotics that I can handle and populating it with the right biotics are gonna make it less likely that a little bit of water I eat, I, I drink is gonna give me gastro Smart. stuff or, or the yeah. wrong food or someone not washing their hands or something. We made a typical breakfast meal with not so typical breakfast foods. Wild boar jerky meat, goat brie, raw broccoli, cabbage, avocado, mild sauerkraut, deer jerky, olive oil, and cranberries. No spices or seasonings, just ingredients I'd never consider pairing together. But I was learning another lesson, how to make tasty fuel. You've got the probiotics with the sauerkraut, and you've got healthy fats with the olive oil, plus the fats from the meats and the cheese. There we go. Look where we go. I'm gonna try it. Mm hmm This up. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. It tastes like it has salad dressing on it. It's not. That's the tanginess from the um, sauerkraut. It's yeah. a great for it. It's, it's, it's yeah. genius. So everyone is out here is swimming right now and it's actually about 65, 70 degrees. It's sunny at this moment, but usually I would not get in water when it's this cold outside, but it's Austria. <laughs> I never thought my wellness journey would allow me to meet some of the most elite athletes in the world and bring me to one of the most picturesque places I've ever seen. I'm learning that food is more than just something to be enjoyed and provide nourishment. It's fuel. It makes us move. It powers us so we can stretch the limits of our human potential to achieve amazing things. And that's what wellness is, a journey. And we should give our bodies good fuel that will help us endure the other toughest adventure race of all, life.